Dente Rigmortis. I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey, the Stands for Evil. And I'm the Gamer in Yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. And tonight we have, for Icker Fall, Rage Against the Dying of the Light. So, this story uh, is on the Icker Falls website under the submitted section. However, as is kind of the norm with those submitted uh, stories. The author is currently unknown. Um, we just get admin <laughs> who just posts them on the on the uh, on the site. So I wonder if that's by design, just because they want to. Maybe I don't know. Be like be more immersive, being like this person didn't write this. This is just an account of what happened. Maybe. Um, I mean, the comments kind of like end up ruining that that kind of mystique as well. Then, if that's the if that's what they're going for, because <laughs> like. It's usually people is like, oh, this is like really interesting submissions some of that. Um, or there's like, I think I was reading a blog entry on like like an update entry on the uh, main web, the main site where Chris Drop is like, hey, um, submissions haven't been coming up as frequently, not because like it, I'm I'm really picky about like who's coming in or like or, like what's coming through and some of that, but mainly just because we haven't been getting a large uh, like submission uh, ratio of late, so. Um, regardless, this is unrelated. Regardless, yeah. <laughs> regardless, <laughs> um, the uh, so yeah, uh, rage against the dying of the light uh, is the story that we're going to cover tonight. And I will jump into the, well before I jump in, and before I jump into the rundown, let's do our our recommendations for the story. Um, so I'm going to recommend this story. I'm going to partially recommend the story. I'm going to partially recommend this story. Okay. Now let's dive into the rundown and our actual thoughts and all that stuff and see why. So starting with the rundown, um, Nair is writing down the following events as he stares at the flickering light of a fire and dreading the shadows writhing beyond. Uh, this all started on the first week of his torturous occupation as a local American English teacher. On his off time, he's also a writer, but has been suffering from crippling writer's block. So he goes to the bar, like all good writers. <laughs> wow. Um, it, it's a trope. <laughs> um, after getting a drunk... After getting a drunk? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sounds like someone else is already a drunk. Yeah. After getting drunk, he starts... Uh, or after getting drunk and deciding to leave, he starts for his car, but notices the shadows beneath his car are shimmering and moving towards him in a very creepy fashion. So he proceeds to hand his go, go back into the bar, hand his keys to the bartender, and walk home, um, chalking up the encounter to him being drunk. Uh, later, however, during the day, he goes for a walk deep in the forested park in town, only to discover a rotted-out hollow tree where the shadows are also writhing and creeping towards him. Um, Nair, while sober at this point, uh, realizes that it wasn't just a hallucination from, from the night before, uh, freaks out and flees before it gets too dark. Um, these shadows then start kind of ruining his life as they try to drown him in their darkness before he manages to flick on the light while he's sleeping. And he even begins seeing them stalking him in his classroom while he's teaching, particularly between the pages of the book he's holding and reading from. Um, this all kind of culminates to him just staying at home, getting fired from work for his absences, and trying desperately to bathe himself in omnipresent light. Um, but there's always shadows on him. His solution eventually comes to this where he makes a crescent bonfire in broad daylight out in his backyard and sits in the middle of the blaze. Finally surrounded entirely by light, he finishes this account while he, and, and just sits there, waiting for the shadows as night approaches. 
Finn. I don't know if he waits. I think he dies. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, well, he waits and dies, <laughs> presumably, because he's about a good okay, three seconds. The thing, okay, this is this is part part. This this might be an actual thought, but I have a question for you guys. So the way it was described, he made a crescent bonfire. So he's like inside of a like a, a like a space that is not on fire in the middle of the bonfire, right? <laughs> yeah. Or okay, yeah. That's I that's what I was trying to figure like out. A U. Like, like yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A crescent that, that's is the way a the fire is going, and he's <laughs> yeah. just standing in the middle, but he's also on fire because of that. Well, yeah, or he's just very like warm, <laughs> like or like basically like going to burst into flames at any moment. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess yeah, this is I, kind of that actual thoughty, but yeah, yeah, I assumed the end was he just walked into the fire and died. That, honestly, that's what I thought too. And then I was like, oh wait, he said a crescent shaped bonfire, so he it was like a U shaped bonfire that he walked into the space into the center of. Wow, like not being on fire but like he's he's encompassed by fire but like i assume like the the end goal here is to be be li- be one with the fire so that he is always light <laughs> yeah well we'll think of it as two fires side by side but connected in the middle so there's but still kissing. fire in the middle <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair uh I, I don't but yeah that, that's more anymore now <laughs> he might just I, be, he might he, like I, he's reserved to be like my life is just standing in the middle between these two fires now. Well, until the li- t- until the fire burns out, and then he's dead. Y- yeah, the shadows. Yeah, but, that's true. Um, Anyways, we should continue. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was just a, a quick thing because, like, the end, and like you brought it up about like him just dying. So, um, we'll go more into that in our final, in, into our actual thoughts and such. Um, but most importantly, we go to everyone tolerates the Grand Inquisitions. At this point, um, so some people actually Mikey, enjoy stands... them. By the way, <laughs> yeah, Oddly some enough. people. Austin, <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, so yeah, getting on to grammar inquisition, Mikey. The E stands for evil. What do you got? I guess you didn't find any. <laughs> I not, not I was that say, I really, are we changing like, the format here? <laughs> no, like uh, legitimately. Like I, I read through the story. I was like, I mean, I'm sure there are that you guys will find, but like, I, I didn't really notice anything that was like glaring at me to fix so Fair enough. Well, i've got a couple here all right so they um, were growing creeping out from under the car toward moving sneaky slow trying to avoid street lamp light um so my issue with this was just toward if he put toward me, mm, that, okay. that would uh, make it better. So that make it sound like um, they Is were going, correct? creeping out from under the car toward me. Yeah. Moving sneakily slow. So, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And then the next one I have is um, I decided then and there that I had had too much to drink. Uh, So it's the had had. Um, So I rewrote the sentence. So I decided then and there that I had consumed too much. Oh, I see. So that gets rid of the had had scenario. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> but had had, as dumb as it is, is a Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo situation where it's technically grammatically correct. And it yeah. is how people say words. Although in writing, it does look kind of weird. So I'm with you. Yeah. Then I have a conjunction junction. All right. Uh, insert conjunction junction here. Boop. It flickers, starts flicking and catching. So much time has passed. But I don't want to talk about the job. It was just work. Something to pay the bills while I tried to get my writing off the ground. But... That Friday, I sat at my desk at home and stared at that white screen, willing the words to appear. 
and nothing happened. Because that's what writers do, isn't it? Its guts had been eaten out by termites, and I bet it was hollow all the way up. And I saw the shadows again. But the sun's light kept them at bay. But what about when the sun goes down? It was well past midnight when they attacked, and all of a sudden the darkness lifted. It wasn't until fourth period that I saw the shadows. It only got worse from there. It wasn't long after that they just let me go. It gave no quarter. But then, but there were always shadows, always there, always waiting for the lights to go out so they could come out. It went on like this until I realized the solution. It was the only way. But it wasn't just a pile, but a crescent shape leaving an opening so I could walk straight into the flames. It's burning hot now. The daylight is fading. But I'm going to beat them now. It's so bright. Finn. Wow. <laughs> you really don't get it. Like, a, like, I was like, try like, the monster is like the darkness, but also the fire, but also this like rotted out, hollowed out thing. <laughs> and like the crescent shaped thing is also the monster that he's walking into the mouth of <laughs> kind of thing. That's just monster scape. It's everywhere. Oh God. <laughs> no, not monster scape. <laughs> That's the worst type of scape. <laughs> and yeah, so, um, and the reason Mikey strings all these sentences together is to highlight all the ones in the story that start with words that they probably shouldn't, like it's ends or buts, because there's always better words. Indeed. All right, I suppose that puts uh, you up there, gamer. It is. It'd be my time. I keep looking into the fire, ignoring the shadows gathering around me. So, um, I, I found the transition between fire and annoying didn't the way it's written. It doesn't have a break at all. So I feel like just a comma in there makes it flow a little better. So it would be, okay. I keep looking into the fire, ignoring the shadows gathering around me compared to him looking into the fire, ignoring the shadows looking around yeah. me, you know, like either way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I don't want to talk about the job. That's not what's important now. Hell, it wasn't even important then. And there's a new paragraph that starts. It was just work, something to pay the bills while I tried to get my writing off the ground, blah, 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 blah. So me reading this, he's basically going like, so I'm not here to talk about my job, but here, let me talk about the job. Because <laughs> like the entire yeah. next paragraph yeah. is also him talking about the job. <laughs> and yes, it matters. But don't say you're going to stop talking about something then immediately continue talking about it. It would hit better if he actually stopped talking about it then. Mm -hmm. So like put out all the information for, that you need about the job and why the job has to do with the story and then say, but I don't want to talk about it, you know, then move on. I, I think I think what he, he means by like, it, 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 that's not important right now, like is, is his hatred for the job. <laughs> Maybe because because like the next the paragraph before that is like him talking about the asshole who like decided to uh, put that goddamn Ethan from a uh, book into the curriculum and that guy deserves to be hanged. <laughs> right. I yeah I've got a little comment about that later. Okay, that's <laughs> so, weird. Yeah. Okay, then if that's the case, you'd be like, I don't want to talk about the the shitty aspects of the job. That's not important yeah. right now. Uh, this next one. After the first week of school, I was drained. The last thing I wanted to do was write. But that Friday, I sat at my desk at home and stared at that white screen. 
willing the words to appear, and nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. So to me, it felt like this was leading up to something out of the norm happening, since he said, but that Friday? Is he saying, I like, mean, it, it does. It just takes a little bit of time for that, for that thing to happen. <laughs> like, two or three paragraphs later <laughs> with the, uh, the shadows, like, uh, at the uh, at the bar, I agree. <laughs> like, yeah. But why start? You're making the reader feel like something weird is happening right then with the butt. At least in my opinion, I, when I read it, I thought he was saying like, "Shit normally happens fine," but this week uh, after school, something weird happened, and this is what happened. I sat down, started to write. Like, he was starting to list the things that were... He was starting right away with the weird stuff. Yeah, you were expecting something weird to happen immediately, like, as he's starting to type, like, that night. Not, like, get this... Not not get this whole, like, diatribe of a story. Like, he's not... He's, he's like, all right, this thing happened. Let me start, like, two or three hours before it happens. <laughs> and, yeah, like, write down And I'm not saying yeah. that the creepiness has to show up immediately. Just something out of the norm has to show up immediately. Because he's saying, but that Friday, as in, but that Friday... This was a different, this something different happened, you know? Yeah. So the way that I would correct it is it'd be like that Friday, as usual, I sat at my desk at home, stared at the white screen, blah, 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 blah. Because this is okay. normal. This is the normal yeah. day for him. He sits there staring at the screen and nothing happens because that's his problem. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because he's got crippling writer's block. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's all I got for grammar. Okay. Uh, then I suppose we'll move on to actual thoughts. Um, where the hell is it? Okay, there. You start with this one here. <clears throat> an interchangeable part of an interchangeable part to teach the basic mechanics of grammar, and that god awful Ethan Fromm, the sadist who stuck that one into the curriculum, deserves to be hanged. So, just. I, I, I hear this, I, like, I see this a couple of times in, like, movies and in, like, fiction and even from, like, some real-life accounts of, like, the American education system and literature and stuff, uh, and, like, American literature. It's interesting to read this as a Canadian because looking into it, I discovered, like, that uh, Ethan Fromm is not a person. It's yeah. a book. <laughs> That's what I um, thought, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, I thought Ethan Fromm was the asshole. <laughs> the sadist. Uh, the teacher, but like then I found out it's like actually like a a, a piece of American literature um, that has to do with like a a, sm- a, a like a fictional town uh, somewhere in like New England or something. Um, that's about as far as I got as I read about it. <laughs> um, but as far as I recall, uh, it's not one I and it's it's not a book I obviously it's not a book I heard of when it, like growing up and and being taught in the Canadian education system. Uh, at least in English, as far as I can tell, like uh, I, I think we did like to Kill a Mockingbird uh, and like Romeo and Ju- like some of the Shakespearean stuff, but we never uh, and like maybe like I guess maybe like one of the Leacock novels because we're in Ontario, but I yeah like so it, it's interesting to kind of for me like get these little like little bits from uh, from their perspective because like it's a country that's so close to ours yet it has such obvious differences <laughs> to it. And even the attitude that he has here with like, it's like, Oh God, having to teach these fucking kids that just don't want to be taught and having to make it like, having to, having to make myself like uh, ha- make it sound interesting. So they'll fucking read mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's, it's an attitude I hear and see a lot in as a trope. Um, and, and, or I, I think even something that befalls a lot of American English teachers uh, just from what I've observed again in media and from uh, real life accounts of the of the subject, it's just like this sort of like nihilistic view of your like the, like the the system has ground these people into dust. <laughs> uh, it into, like, like it, they, yeah. they start off like all peppy and stuff of like that, and it just grinds their soul to nothing. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so it's, it, again, it's an inter- like just something I found very interesting. Like reading this, it, it reminded me of like the differences between our two countries, um, and like specifically in the education system. And I'm not saying like Canada's education system is any better, um, though. I, I, from what I've heard, it's it's certainly not worse. <laughs> um, and 
the the i just the idea of like this this trope that always keeps to coming up in like media and stuff of like that of like the the nihilistic or like just the 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 kicked and beaten <laughs> english teacher like mentally and emotionally <laughs> um but i digress i'm going to move on to my next thing here <laughs> um i loved that park it was less park and more protected wilderness large swatches of untamed forest right here in the city. I broke away from the well-worn path and headed off deeper into the trees. No! The beckoning pathway is calling another person! Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's immediately what came to mind. It's like he's going to bump into like some cannibalistic uh, or carnivorous uh, big feet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, or depending on, on what um, <laughs> oh. Force is talking about, Stillwood King. I was also thinking, it was like, I was like, wow, wait, did the Stillwood, like, is this story take place in like a f- in in a future time, <laughs> um, where like the city of Vicker Falls has like grown, so like they've now got like a like a Central Park sort of situation, like in Manhattan, where like the Stillwood is now like a an inner city like park well, for protected that's wilderness. That's thing. Like, do we have a proper visual? I don't mean literal, kind I don't of mean literal visual, but like of the scale <laughs> of Vicker Falls, because wasn't there a previous story we read at one point? But they were talking about like a university. Yeah, there is like a university. I mean, like, like the, the, the thing about shit? like, well, uh, the by the museum, it's more like a historical thing. Uh, also, I think the museum was also in a different town, or was like in a. And I think so, even like the uh, there is a there, supposedly there's like a university that's also like for funerary things and stuff. Um, again, this is something that like from what I I've I've seen in in the states, like from my 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 seldom visits to it and such. Um, there are towns that just kind of pop up and they just like throw in like weird, like bits of like infrastructure, like, uh, like there's the concept of like a universe, uh, a university town is a thing where like a town pops up because of a university, um, or like a large, like, or like there's like a bunch of like, just kind of random things that the town splurges on. Hmm. Um, though there is actually a, uh, at least on the, the, I'm not sure if it's on the website, but on the the cover for Icker Falls, a quiet community uh, guide, uh, the the printed book that has a bunch of Chris Straub's like Icker Falls stories in it. The cover it has like a map of like Icker Falls, like the street layout. <laughs> and what's the scale of it? Kind of feel like it's pretty small. Like I would picture like a uh, yeah, it, it's definitely a town. It's not really a city. Okay. Um. Hang on. Actually, I think yeah. Pull, but yeah. it could be that. Um, um, Nair basically mis like misworded the uh, place he lives in, or this actually doesn't take place in Ecker Falls at all. It's like or it could take yeah, it could York. take place. <laughs> <laughs> it could be New York. It could also be again. It could be like in a um. And that's the thing about this about Ecker Falls is because it's a fictional place that doesn't really have a lot like a like there's there's landmarks and stuff, but it's it's open to interpretation, like the size and stuff like that and the size and scale. Yeah. And also it depends on like the time frame, Cause like towns, blo- like towns boom and, and grow and shrink uh, with the passing of decades, mm-hmm. like given like what happens and stuff in the town. Like, so yeah. And you know, with all the great um, shit that happens in Nicker falls, it's only going to grow. Well, I mean, like <laughs> you say that, but like, yeah, yeah. There was like, there was definitely a time where it shrunk, but then there was like, there's stories that like talk about like, development companies coming in and like expanding sections of it um so yeah like there are like new suburbs that are being developed like uh like elysium and stuff like that i don't in lore i don't know why people want to live in ecker falls <laughs> it's yeah it, it is sort of like it's just a mystery i <laughs> that, know why part you of spookiness. cultists would love to li- <laughs> live in ecker falls but with all the deaths and weird shit you figure people would be like nah bro i'm out <laughs> yeah fair <laughs> I mean, it's it's like it, it sometimes it, it bottles up to like why do people live in like weird shitty towns, like anywhere in the world? Like That's... it's usually because of circumstances, like they're fucking stuck there. Like why does anybody live in like areas that have like major like murder sprees or like crime and stuff like that? It's because they're stuck there. I, I guess. Um, I, if, and then I like, feel like it'd be different because there's literal supernatural shit happening in this town. Like that would be more I th- incentive to get the fuck out. <laughs> The problem is though with that is like yes, there's a bunch of supernatural shit, but no, but the general public is probably unaware of that because like it's being kept secret by the town or like organizations within the town, like so. 
yeah I, again i i get you like why does anybody like live in these weird towns and so it's like well it's like generally like a situation like economical and financial situations i think it's actually one of the reasons why uh like a lot of analysis of haunted houses like why would anybody live in that fucking haunted house like well because they tied all their money into this house and they they're fucking stuck there they can't just leave otherwise they'll they'll be homeless <laughs> yeah fair enough yeah um <laughs> but <laughs> moving on <laughs> Suddenly, just got into a really analytical view of like, of like, why does people live in haunted places? <laughs> um, that is for another time. <laughs> we could do an entire episode, I feel, on like that topic, <laughs> and and perhaps we should. We shall see. Yeah. Uh, moving on, though. Um, where the hell am I? That was all about the park thing, right? <laughs> about yep. it started off as as a joke thing with like the beckoning pathway, <laughs> but. Um, okay, moving on to the next thing here. <clears throat> I stared into the hollow, a jagged, broken hole in the dead center, an empty eye socket, and I saw the shadows again. I remembered my drunken hallucination, and I felt that dread in my gut again. The shadows swirled in that hollow. They wanted to come out. They wanted to wrap around me, cover me in darkness, but the sun's light kept them at bay. I really like these shimmering shadows, like just the way they're described in this story, as they relate to Icker Falls, especially because the way they're 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 described in the story, like just kind of on the verge of just just on the threshold between like light and dark, or like just barely being seen by the person because and like as they're hiding and waiting to like come out and play or come out and attack him and stuff. It feels very much in line with the mood and themes of Icker Fall, of the original Icker Fall stories by Chris Straub. Um, specifically, like uh, w- what kind of remind it reminds me of is the story Curious Little Thing, which is about a guy who's constantly seeing this little girl just on the precipice of his eyesight, or like just in like the crevice, like just as a door closes, suddenly there's a girl, there's a little girl's eyeball, like and like face just in the in the in the crack between in in the opening there Mm -hmm. or like and and then it gets even work worse and creepy and creepier because like suddenly that that little girl starts like stalking him like it started off like she popped up at the hotel he was staying at and now she he can't stop he can't not see her at the precipice of like openings so like even in like a drawer he'll open a drawer slightly and he'll see her her face like poking out like kind of like poking out just for like a half second yeah, exactly. And then he opens, he like, w- like, wicks, like, just pulls like the uh, the drawer right out, and there's nobody there. Yeah. Or like, one. I think it end. I think that story ends with him like brushing his teeth and realizing he can see her face down his tonsil, like by his tonsils. Yeah, because he opened his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's that kind of thing. It's like it's that kind of creepy vibe that you kind of get from some of the Icker Falls stories, where it's just like the per just this the supernatural presence is there but like just on the outer edge the fringes of your perception <laughs> and in regards to the visual of it the way that i saw it is honestly a lot like um like venom like the marvel venom where cause yeah. it's like shimmering shadow so it's like it's this black goo but it's shiny so it's yeah. catching light that is like reflecting and shit so that's why it has kind of like a shimmering kind of look to it a black icker, yeah. uh, some might say. Yeah, it, it might be the icker of Icker Falls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I also kind of get a little bit of the, uh, the 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 darkness presence from from Alan Wake and uh, uh, even the darkness like of the Taken from uh, from Destiny <laughs> a little bit. Just like that, like whenever it's dark, there's like this weird like after effect kind of shimmer about the about like when about any of the people that are consumed or taken by the darkness. I don't remember. What the Taken look like in Destiny. In Destiny, they kind of have like a weird like afterglow, like kind of um, like almost like oh, ghostly appearance, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a kind of after effect. Yeah. So that's kind of what I was like also envisioning, and like again, they describe it pretty well when he first encounters it when he's drunk. Is like it's almost like an oil slick, like so you're kind of seeing that weird wavery coloration mm-hmm. in the darkness. But yeah, so. Thought it was really cool, and it it, it the story does seem like in terms of the entity and the thing that's like the spookiness of the story, it plays in well with the Icker Falls vibe. Um, but moving on to the next one here, I opened my mouth to talk again, looking down at my book as I did so. My voice caught in my throat. 
The shadows pulsed under the pages, thin paper pages barely holding them back. I threw the book across the room, and a few students ducked as, it's, as it went over their heads. I left the room and didn't look back. I couldn't afford to look back because I was too busy checking the walls and corners. So this could all be supernatural. Or this English teacher could be suffering from some variant of nyctophobia, which is a fear of darkness. Um, and it just triggered because of the stress of like getting a new job and having to deal with this like system and th this education system that he's dealing with and such, and his writer's block and all that. Um, it does seem like he's the only one, and I say this only because like it does seem like he's the only one that's noticing the dark shimmering tendrils stalking him. <laughs> Like while he's in class and stuff like that, he's the only one that's like noticing the darkness. Mm -hmm. um, also, again, kind of in line with with Ickerfall's stories, the this paranoia like behavior the character is exhibiting is very Icker Falls and even Brood Hollow, which is the sister town to Icker Falls, and a web comic by Chris Straub um, that he did after his stint with the Icker Falls stories that he wrote. Um, and it's just that like just like this character dealing with something that is like a blend between psychological horror and supernatural horror. Um, like the character has some kind of psychological thing, uh, like a tick or um, some kind of a mannerism that kind of ties into why he's seeing supernatural shit. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I, and again, like this idea of like him just in the class, like I could, I, I almost visualized it as like an early two thousands, like, horror movie like one of the the ones where like the character is slowly the movie's like going on and the character is slowly seeing the dark presence like stalking him at, like as he's as he's trying to live his life and then he like finally has like a bout of freak out in public which is in the classroom so uh my next one here uh speaking of his his spiral into uh into uh mania and such uh i shaved my head to remove the hair i threw away my clothes but there were always shadows, always there, always waiting for the light to go out so they could come out. It went on like this until I realized the solution. I would have, I would have to give myself up completely to the light. It was the only way. I built up a bonfire during the day. So I read this part, like I got to this part and read this, and I was like, so I guess this could be implied to be like a suicide note, like the, what we're reading. Yeah. For this man who's suffering from some derangement, uh, again, like nicto like a really extreme case of nyctophobia that has gone too far. Um, and when, yeah, like when I, yeah, I got here, it actually kind of got like, I kind of got like a sense of dread, like almost like a chill down my spine when I read it. It's like, oh, oh no. <laughs> like, I know what's going to happen next <laughs> sort of situation. Um, though, if he, here's the thing I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like picking at this part. If he is indeed writing this in the middle of the flames, as it was kind of shown earlier, like at the very beginning of the story, <laughs> that he's like writing this no. down, and he's like while watching the flickering of the light and stuff. I, I know like there's a space that he's in in the center of the flames and stuff, but like that note, like if he's writing that down, like if it's on paper, it's gonna burn up pretty quick. I, <laughs> Even like in the with the intense heat and stuff, I, I don't <laughs> think he's literally writing this down while standing in the fire. Because he's saying, Fair. like, he could I've all... got to finish this. Like, he hasn't done it yet. So he's sitting down next to it, writing all this down. And then at the end, but I'm going to beat and them just, now. Yeah. As he walks into the Pretty flames. Much, yeah. And be, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I could, I could find, find that. Uh, I just thought, it was, like, to be funny about it. Just like, he's, not allowed <laughs> he's writing this thing that, as, <laughs> how dare you, Gamer? Uh, just like as he's writing it on paper, the fringes of the page are like burning or like crisping up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or like a, an alternative is like maybe he's typing this up on his phone or a tablet and posting it somewhere, like on a blog or on like uh, on the <laughs> he's submitting it to the Ickerfall story. Yeah. <laughs> just get like really meta about it. If but uh, yeah, that's why it is in lore. Then maybe <laughs> I don't. I mean, it is. It is kind of like it's not, but it is because it's like Icker Falls. A, it's like a um, like a, a community website page, but it's also like Chris Drobs like creepy pasta page, like like website for his story surrounding Icker Falls. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> so it, it could be and it could not be. It's Schrodinger's Icar- it's Schrodinger's site. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like in lore site. So um but that is all I have for Icar Falls uh raging against a rage against the dying of the light. So Mikey, the E stands for evil. What do you got? All right. Well, I wanted this to be supernatural, but as you pointed <laughs> out, it's very much likely him just going insane. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, it could be both. It could be and, both. <laughs> and, and, well, the shadows are neat and all, mm-hmm. but they also have their problems. Yeah. Because, as you pointed out, there's that section with the... Uh, the shadows pulsing under the pages. At which point, we're assuming he's fully clothed, so why isn't the shadow attacking him under his clothes? Yeah, like, why aren't they creeping up, like, to get it? Like, why aren't they trying to, like, stop his heart or, like, pierce him or something like that while he's in, this, in that situation? I mean, if you really yeah. want to go nuts with it, why aren't they already, like, in his stomach? I'm pretty sure there's no light in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah, and exactly, like, they've all... They're... <laughs> The the darkness is coming from inside the body. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's the the issue that I run into is that yeah, there's shadows inside you. So, yeah. um, what exactly are the rules of this dark entity that is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, shadow is is just the absence of light and the. Um, the thing there is that, like, he gets drunk the one night and then he sees shadows under his car. Yeah. <clears throat> so. He was drunk. <laughs> but couldn't he technically have been attacked then? Because it, the light at nighttime is a lot less than sunlight. Yeah. And, like, if he's walking home at night, like, yeah, there's spot, there's, uh, there's, um, street lights and stuff. But this isn't Alan, like, and maybe this is like an Alan Wake situation where, like, it's sort of a predatory entity. So it's like not like as soon as he goes to the light, he's gone. It's not like that. Uh, that one story we did where, like, um, that robotic cat. Yeah, the robotic cat that's in the uh, in the in the bubble, like the field of influence sort of situation. <laughs> yeah, um, or just because it's slow. Because it said it was like slowly creeping towards him. Yeah. Um, that's true. Or it could just be playing with his food and drive. Maybe it's like it's intentionally trying to drive him nuts. Yeah. Like maybe it actually does not plan on like killing him at all. It's pl- it's planning on letting him kill himself. Like hence why the fire and stuff like that. Like it's actually what it wants. But so you're saying that the shadows just want to be his friend and he's misinterpreting it. Yep. This is a buddy horror. <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> yeah. See, it was it was just getting really handsy that one night. Mm-hmm. It got it, it, it like it 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 uh it got a little too excited <laughs> when he was asleep. Didn't know it didn't know uh people skill. It didn't have it doesn't have proper people skills because it's an inhuman presence of darkness. Mm. It's trying to learn. Yeah. Yeah, after that it was slowly kind of creeping in and like slowly like kind of uh meandering around in like the hidden spaces. Where darkness falls, you know. So, and when he threw out all of his clothes, yeah. it didn't need to get handsy anymore because it has full view of him in the nude all the time. Yeah. So this is yeah, it's a buddy horror that's really also a a, a para romantic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a para romantic tragedy because <laughs> it's not like a comedy, but it's like a tragedy in that like the the monster just wants to get close to him, um, and is like is like madly in love with him, but now but he unfortunately because of that love. It's just driven the guy mad. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Didn't think we were gonna go there with this. No, but here we yeah. are. Um, also, to kind of bring something back to uh, that you were saying earlier, Mikey, uh, like with your like your, it's clearly just like this guy's suffering from some kind of derangement or some kind of mania. Um, we both have watched a movie in the in the last year, I think that was very similar to that kind of situation called, I think it was Wes Craven's they where it's like dark presences lurking in the shadows, but by the end it's 
definitely appears to be of, have been some like, the way that the film like ends up uh like finishing it like tying everything off it does seem to be like there's it's something more of a mundane like um psychosis and i i remember like us finishing that movie and kind of wishing it hadn't gone that route <laughs> because it's that sort of thing where that trope happens and it happens all too often when it comes with like psychosis and stuff. It's like, Oh, the person was just crazy or the person was just yeah. suffering from some kind of, of, of derangement or, or uh, mania that uh, they need to get. They, they, or they were in an asylum the entire time. Yeah. It's the equivalent <laughs> of saying it was all a dream. Exactly. And like it, it the first couple of times in, in movies, it was interesting and, and like thought provoking. But when you keep doing that in that genre, it kind of gets really stale, especially for me. Like, it's like, oh, why couldn't it have actually been a ghost or some kind of thing beyond the, the threshold of reality that this person is being attacked by? Why do we have to keep doing this, like, kind of lame? It was just the person was just crazy. Like, it's sort of stale at this point. Yep. And also mildly offensive. But you said this was released in 2008. That's true, and actually, and that that movie I, I just referenced, they actually did it come out around that same time. Uh oh, <laughs> uh oh, two thousand and two. <laughs> Wes Craven's They did come out in two thousand and two. Hmm. Everything I mean, again, it's mixed. nothing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will give Alan Wake this much, like regarding this, they do that trope, but then they're like. Nah, dog. It's still supernatural. <laughs> like they do a reverse Hamlet, or they do like a reverse fake out <laughs> of yeah, like really? you think it's all in, it's yeah you think it's all like in his head like he's actually at the uh, at the uh, at the uh, artist retreat like therapist place like dealing with all this stuff, and then it turns out that no the therapist guy like the artist retreat place he's been tr- he's actually been trying to use he's using the artist that he has at this retreat like. Uh, uh, trying to harness the supernatural element and then the supernatural thing like goes full war and like starts wrecking the place and stuff like that it's like no nah, dog you thought that like we were gonna fake you out nope it's it's actually supernatural it's, it's not just out, psychological fake out. Now yeah what? exactly <laughs> yo dog i heard you like fake out so we got a fake out to your yeah. fake out <laughs> like i loved that like that was like Mwah! Chef's kiss of like what to do with in this with this trope nowadays. That, that's it's a like, trope. You would have to fake out your fake out your fake out. It's just gonna become <laughs> it's just gonna become Inception yeah. at that point. Like what? Where does the dream end and where does the waking world start? It doesn't. Uh. But yeah. And that's the end of my episode. Wow. I, I, I want to I want to apologize again, Mikey, for like stealing your 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 spotlight. But at the same time, you're a catalyst <laughs> for discussion. <laughs> a little bit. So, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, gamer, what do you okay. got? So, um, first, uh, about the title, Rage Against the Machine. Of, I mean, Rage Against the the Dying. Of <laughs> right. <light. laughs> Yeah, I actually read it as Rage Against the Machine first for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Also, where's the rage? So like that this? giant mechanical tiger can't. So that me- mechanical tiger is a lot more prevalent. Yeah, pretty much right. <laughs> um, but where's the rage in all this? Like he's he's concerned and he doesn't know what to do. But he's there's no <laughs> rage. Yeah, I think I think it's more like. I don't I know. I honestly title, like I the dying yeah. of the light as in like yeah, the shadow is trying to overtake the light and such. Maybe it's not him that's raging against it. Maybe it's the shadows that are raging against the dying of the light because like they're like writhing and like tr- creeping out and trying to get to him but like the lights keeping them at bay. But the dying of the light is saying that the light is going away so they're raging against the fact that the light's going away but they like the light or they they like oh that's the shadows, true rather. Yeah, it it might have been used. It, it might have been chosen like as a title because like Rage Against the Machine, like riding against like the dying of the light, like you're you're pissed off about like the dying of the light, or it's like a little extreme, like a little bit of an extreme use of the word of the term. But like, 
he is sort of like flustered and and agitated about like the fact that he can't find enough light to keep the shadows at yeah, bay. Agitation against the dying of the light doesn't sound as cool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So hence why he used rage against the light. Yeah. Of the light. <laughs> but I'll move on from there. Okay. So after he gets drunk and all that, he says he walked to my car, jingling my keys. That's when I saw the shadows sitting under the car, waiting for me to get close. So as soon as I read that, I'm like, oh man, now this whole story is just going to be what's he's what he's imagining due to the booze. And anytime they, they show up later, it's just his active imagination since he's a writer. Like That's what I thought of at that point. And basically, that's yeah. what happened. Yeah, basically. I mean, I... Yeah. <laughs> I, sure. Okay. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah, Sounds sorry. Like you say words. <laughs> I just like I was like I, I can't I want to counter you but I can't. It's just <laughs> like you're, you're, I thought the same thing. Yeah. Like your basic <laughs> reaction, your default reaction is to be like, but actually, but you had no words yeah. to say. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's it's like that one scene from like uh uh what is it uh, one of the uh the Jay and Silent Bob movies is like where Jay or, or Kevin or uh Bob goes to say something like prophetic like he always does and he's just like, I got nothing. <laughs> pretty much okay fine yeah my next quote uh, i ran i'm not ashamed of that even then so early on when so early on when they couldn't even get at me i bolted and ran i had to make sure i got away while there was still light i had to get away so like before when he saw them like the the living shadows and all that mm-hmm. He was already. It was nighttime then when he saw them, and he was fine. Yeah, because he said I blinked because it was night at the the point with the um the bar. Because he says I blinked twice hard, tried to shake what I was seeing. They were moving, creeping out from under the car, moving slow, moving slow, trying to avoid the street lamp, street lamps and all that. So he's already been out in the middle of nowhere with this here. The darkness. Yeah, like during the night. So I don't know <laughs> yeah. why he's so concerned. I have the perfect explanation for this. Sure. <laughs> if you don't mind me follow, like following up with sure, that. Sure, go ahead. So, when he was drunk and going to his car and he saw and uh, he rolled a spot check and he and he passed the spot okay. check, saw the shimmering like shadows underneath yeah. his car. Rolled the sand uh-huh. check. However, he gets a bonus because he's drunk. I see. <laughs> um so he passed that sand check with flying colors and was like you know what? I'm a little too drunk to drive. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go walk home. And so, like, that was it. Like, that was the end of that trip. Like, that situation. Then we cut to the next encounter, which is during the day when he's sober and he's out in the woods and stuff like that. And then he has to roll another spot check. And he still notices the tree in the hollow and stuff like that, and sees the shadow, the, the same shadow thing in the tree and stuff like that. That's when he rolls the sand check and fails hard. Like, a, we're we're talking a hundred on the percentile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we get he's taken double sand hit damage. And that's what, like, when the mania and, like, the, the psychosis starts kicking in. That's when he has to choose, like, freeze, uh, flight, or fugue? What was what, what it? Uh, fight, flight, or fugue. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Flight. Yeah. yeah. And he chose flight. Indeed. <laughs> Always chose flight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's usually yeah. Until the end, where he chose his fight, where he's just going to burn himself up. Is that actually fight? I guess. I, I, I would, yeah, I, I, would, I would say that's probably fight. Uh, a fight response. I suppose because he's actively trying to fight against. Unless it's a fugue response, he just like he like rolls the sand, like gets the fugue, uh, the fugue state, and he's just like standing there in the middle of the fire. Like oh, he had to God. create the fire first, so he's fighting <laughs> yeah. to create a fugue state that he can live in. Yeah, great. I'm glad we <laughs> figured this out. Yeah. That being said, uh, when he saw the shadows at the start, they were moving so slow. I, I don't know why he'd be so concerned. To the point that he had to it's, run. It's still it's I mean, in a panic. Like I, I get rolling. It is sand. a disconcerting it, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. D and D and like D twenty stats aside, you know, um I and I get it too. He's in the middle of a forest right now. There's not exactly a lot of yeah. light. That's why he, Yeah, he's yeah, there's canopy. Yeah. So So that's why he yeah. wants to get out of there, but yeah. I just had a visualization of a snail slowly crawling and then him yelling and running That's what away. It felt like honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's like 
mean, sure. Yeah. I, again, like the story's trying to like amp up like this guy's like really skittish and freaking yeah. out. So, and, and I get that. Yeah. Although <laughs> the snail, that's exactly what I. Yeah, kinda, I know what it kind of felt like see i was actually thinking it's like it's like well what would you do if like a giant weird like shadow octopus thing started writhing out of a tree it was like like at a very slow pace it's like i would freak out and probably like run away i don't know if i'd run all the way home but i'd run away i would run away but I <laughs> if, it, if it surprised me he's he's like Sorry. he's running away because he's like he's running away because he is concerned about what's going to happen at night because they're able to yeah. move sort of during the day a little bit so he's making assumptions yeah. that at night they'll just cover the place in monster and you cannot move without getting screwed. Yeah. Which is weird because he's existed at nighttime for many years at this point. <laughs> well, yeah, again, like, yeah, he, I think, I think this is where it's like, he's starting to realize like, like, again, it's that ignorance is bliss sort of thing. It's like, Oh God, what have I been living with all this time? Oh God, oh God. Like he's, he's that's where like the anxiety and like the, the paranoia starts kicking mm-hmm. in. Like they've always been there his whole life. He's just actually noticing them now. So once you can see it, it and can't now be unseen. Looked, yeah, it's like when you look into the abyss, watch out because the abyss will look back into you. Actually, that reminds me of something an unseen thing that I wanted to show you guys a little while ago. Uh uh wait, what? <laughs> like once you see it, you can't unsee it. Do you want to see this? You're allowed to say no. Sure. I'll, no, you know what? Fuck it. Okay. Let's see it. This has no relation to the story. It just reminded me. Okay. Is it going to go? In, is it going in the nightmare fuel um, section? I guess it's not really nightmare fuely. It's just kind of silly. And I saw it. Okay. And I'm like, hey, I can't okay. unsee that now. I don't want to subject this to a bunch of random people. I'll just subject it to you two. So if they don't want to be, and then I'll leave a, dis- a link in the description sure. below. <laughs> So people can make their own judgment call for yes. that. <laughs> so this. I've been messaging both of you. There you go. You're welcome. Oh, pff, I've oh, seen have this you? Before. I have not yeah. seen that. I saw that yeah. recently. Like, really? Okay, that's where we're <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, fun. yeah I, it, it's very one, funny. Say that. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those early ones, like, once you see it, you'll ship bricks sort mm-hmm. of memes. Yes. Yeah, that's like a really early I meme. Much. <laughs> I'm obviously not the first one to realize it because it's on the internet. I just only realized it or yeah. saw it recently. Gamer, always on the pulse of, of the current memes. Yeah, of course I am. <laughs> always got his fi- always got the finger on the pulse of yeah, memes. Yeah, unfortunately the pulse died like 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he, you're just calling it now. It's like, uh, he died like two, uh, 20 mm-hmm. years ago. Yep. You're holding you're holding the wrist of a skeleton. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's how I do. Yeah. But anyways. I believe I said all the words I need to say on that word. On that string of words. So I can move on. Okay. Uh by the time I got home I rationalized it, made the shadows a harmless fantasy, creation of a bored mind, and went to sleep more or less reassured. So him saying that is pretty much straight up quoting what I thought before was going to happen. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, great. Like, again, I was sort of disappointed that it's hammering home, like, this is not real. Yeah. Like Mike, you was saying. See, at that point in the story, like, whereas you guys went that route, like, I was also disappointed. Like, I was like, oh, I know where this is going. In. And then when it started, like, attacking him and stuff, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. The... <laughs> I'm going to suspend my disbelief, my my, my uh, sense of disbelief, and just accept the, accept the story as surface value uh, that it is actually being attacked. He's actually being attacked, <laughs> even though the character to enjoy the story. is saying that this isn't real, and I'm rationalizing it. Well, he's trying to rationalize. I guess. It. Yeah. yeah. We'll move on. Uh, you kind of brought this up mm-hmm. earlier. the The shadows pulsing on the pages of his book that he's looking at and stuff. I really like yeah. the concept of a threat that can be literally any shadow, no matter Anywhere. the scale of it. Because shadows are everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm staring at I'm like looking at all the like I'm looking at all the, the posters I have on my wall with shadows just underlying them. The the darkness between my shelves. Yep. The darkness in the folds of my uh, of my wrinkles on my hand. They're everywhere. Like, if you want to be technical, if you got hairy arms, <laughs> just, there's just little like... shadows underneath all the hairs on your arms. Yep. Actually, would there be? I guess there would have to be. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, for so sure. Small, you don't really see them. But is it like yeah. a situation where if it's a tiny shadow like that, it can't have any effect? But once the shadow has enough, um, like mass that it's actually a proper visible shadow, that's when it can actually strike. Yeah. Well, and again, he doesn't know because like he doesn't know the rules of this this entity. So he's just kind of going nuts over. Yeah, because like if you hold over fear of the unknown, if effectively. You hold a pen, <laughs> Like above your table horizontally, it has a shadow. But the further you get away from it, yeah. eventually the shadow goes away. So there's got to be a point when there's no monster in that shadow, right? Yeah. You would hope, but there's like that window of opportunity that like you have to try and get past. So as I'm just slowly raising and lowering a pen on my table, I'm gonna stop doing that. <laughs> I was doing the same thing, <laughs> bro. It's it's fine. Yeah. If you're also raising a, no, no, a no, pen against like, your table, let us know in the comments. I'm also like now looking like at all the shadows of my room. <laughs> Just like, oh yeah, there's a lot of shadows. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're scary. Like, not in, not in like a scared way. Just like, oh yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Kind of reminds me of um, a game that I played called uh, Aragami, where you okay. are a ninja reborn through shadows basically and you can only exist in the shadows so like as you're going around assassinating enemies nice. you have to like be in their shadow or the shadow of other things to teleport to them and stuff like that it's pretty nice cute. that also actually remind. there's another game um called contrast that does that kind of similar situation like where uh the character you play is a uh, an invisible like a, an imaginary friend to this like this little french mm. girl and she can only uh you you only ever you see her occasionally like as a as a natural person during some of the the scenes but like for the most of the gameplay you are a shadow on the wall and you're you, and you're um having the little girl move objects to cast shadows that you can actually like hop and like platform on that's pretty cool yeah yes i will because it's like that so oh, go ahead sorry <laughs> Oh, just because it, it's like sort of like that um, that thing that like I don't know if you guys did as kids, but like uh, on like trips and stuff of like that. Uh, when you're when you're driving down the highway or down like a road, like to go somewhere. As a child, with your parents, I drove all ever, the like... time. As a what? child, I drove all the time personally. I mean, with your parents, like like in the, like oh. driving, and you're in the car looking outside the side of the car. Like, did you ever know? Did you ever imagine like a, a like character hopping from shadow to shadow? Was that a thing that you guys did? I did it a lot <laughs> as a kid. Nah. <laughs> okay. I put Fair. my hand out the window. And I mean, did it... like woo, and felt the the the, the wind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Apparently, it's apparently it's, it is something that a lot of people did do because, like, uh, I, I remember seeing something on Twitter the other a couple of a, a while ago, um, about like commenting about that. And I was like, oh my god, somebody else does that, <laughs> or somebody else did that as a kid. <laughs> For sure. Kids do but, lots of things. Mm-hmm. But I will move on from there. Yes. Uh, to him having his um, light safe rooms in his house and such. And just like how there's lights everywhere and he's like become a shut in and only going out during the day and being generally um, trying to find a, a nice word concerned about everything just to the, the nth degree. Does he not have any yeah. friends or family? Shouldn't someone be concerned about him? Like asking them to get therapy or something? Uh, clearly not. <laughs> he was just like a drifter that walked into town. and was like, hey, you want to be a teacher? He's like, fine. <laughs> and then he's a teacher. <laughs> or, or fine. We, uh, next, the first week, it's like, oh, God. Yeah, that's how it goes, yeah. <laughs> I would love to be a teacher. It's got to be fun. <laughs> End of the first yeah. day, or or like, <laughs> yeah. or it's like one of those situations where like, um, all of his like he doesn't have any friends in the area, and all of his family are like states like several states over, so like they can't they they they're not within pretty de- uh, within a pretty de- uh, yeah, well, they're not within like easy driving distance to do a wellness check on him. I suppose I just I feel like someone should be should be some other characters in this is what I'm trying to say. Okay. And that's all about that's about all I got for notes. All right. So 
on to final thoughts then. So, as I've said, I really liked the mood and themes of this one. Uh, the entity is interesting um, and, and very kind of familiar or meshes very well with the other tropes and mood and atmosphere that Iker Falls stories tend to try and bring out, uh, especially like the original ones. So I'm still going to recommend this one. Mikey, these stands for evil. So as I said, the, the shadow concept is neat. But I wanted more. Like, uh, I wanted him to vomit shadows and or have shadows clawing at his eyelids. Oh, God. <laughs> like, like, pick it up a notch. <laughs> yeah, as, as soon as you close your eye, you have a shadow on your eye. I mean, technically... <laughs> The inside of your eye is always shadow because there's like a hole in the front of your eye. The light doesn't get directly in the eye, like in through the pupil. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So, the like uh, Cultus was saying, the trope of it being all in his mind and whatnot sort of ruined it for me. So I'm still at a personal recommendation because the shadow concept is neat. I just wanted to go further and not just fall back on oh the guy was insane. Mm-hmm. Fair. And then gamer. Yeah, I'm kind of the same here. Is um the concept was good. The shadows are a threat because they're everywhere. You know that's good. But my problem with the story is how he's like I said with my last note. My problem with the story is how he seems to kind of live in his own bubble. No one seems to interact with him. It kind of feels like a story to get a point across, and that's good, but it does that. But the realism in the immersion kind of t- hits along the way because of that. Like, maybe it's Fair. just because yeah. these are the mad ramblings of Nair, and that's why it's not including the people around him that are trying to help him, because he's just writing down what mm-hmm. he's writing down. Like, I guess that's fine. It's an unreliable yeah. narrator, basically, right? Um, yeah, it's like what we're not seeing is like the several like letters he's gotten from like his mom or his his, his cousins or, or brother or whatever, saying it's like, "Hey, man, what's going on?" Or like the unanswered phone calls on the uh, on the message machine from like loved ones or friends, and even like the like the school counselor or something like that, like or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, you definitely. Yeah, be talking to him. Be like, "Are you um crying?" You gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta, uh, you need to go see some help about them, them shows, okay? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the setup and the rationalizing for the monster I didn't personally care for, uh, because it's mm-hmm. setting up, setting it up is as a drunken vision for a stressed creative individual than having the character himself make the assumption that I did from the get go that he's just imagining it, it kind of broke any level of actual fear of there being any literal shadows from another world that are breaking through to get him. However, I don't think that's really the point. Because if you view this wanting supernatural, as I did, or rather, that's like the default I go in with, is I'm assuming that something's yeah. going to be supernatural and weird. Because that's my default, uh, you're going to be disappointed if you're assuming and wanting that. I just imagine... Like, um, or rather, sorry, I kind of mixed through my notes here. You're going to be disappointed if you're wanting Supernatural. Because him assuming it, that it's not, breaks any fear and all that, blah, 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 blah. Um, But if you view it as literally a mundane story that's going on through the eyes of just someone who's going nuts for purposes or reasons that don't necessarily even have anything to do with Ecker Falls then you might like it because like real life horror in many ways can be a lot more horrifying than supernatural horror because it could actually happen. Yeah. Yeah. Human horror is just as is, is sometimes even more terrifying than like any kind of supernatural, like boogeyman or Mm. something. And again, like, there doesn't even have to be a reason for why this suddenly happened to him. He could literally have just like, it could have just, his brain could have just triggered something on its own. And suddenly he had this happen. Like, or it could just like, even like the, the amount of stress that he got from 
that first week of teaching English class and stuff like that, that could have sparked his sparked this um, this issue with his uh, with his mind. Mm-hmm. Like it, there often doesn't need to, unfortunately, and and tragically, there doesn't need to be much of a reason for how things like this kind of stuff happens to people. It just does. I'm not gonna lie, though, um, I thought that um, hmm. the whole reason of him being a, a writer that doesn't have any, that has a writer's block and everything, and then this shit happens. I really thought he was going to be making a horror story in fiction based on what he's seeing. It's just eventually it gets to him and kills him or whatever. So Alan yeah, Wake. That's what I thought they were gonna go with, but they kind of set up the writer's yeah. block and didn't do anything with it. Yeah. Hang on a second. I now have to double check. When did Alan Wake first come out? You're really fact checking this one. Twenty ten. Twenty ten. Okay, so this is actually like two years before Alan Wake. Yeah, so Alan out. Wake is this actually. <laughs> yes. Clearly. Raging Against the Dark the Raging Against the Dying of the Light was uh actually the we found the author, guys. It was uh Give me a second. It was, in fact, um, oh, what's the guy's name? Damn it! Hang on. Admin. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, shut up. Uh, it was Sam Lake. We got it. <laughs> it was actually Sam Lake, the uh, the the writer for there Alan Wake. <laughs> no, uh, for that was a joke. <laughs> no one at me at that. It's like actually that's mm-hmm. wrong. Uh, please don't. <laughs> to that point. Does this story really have to be in Icker Falls? Like it could happen anywhere in any like universe because it's just he snapped and he saw this shit and that's what happened. Whether mm-hmm. him snapping meant that he's able to see beyond the veil and he's able to see all the weird shit going on in Icker Falls, maybe. But it's really just him imagining all of this. So it, I don't even know if it's Nicker Falls story, honestly. Yet again, we have two very contrasting things where I think it fits perfectly in Nicker Falls, and you're like, no, it doesn't really. Yeah, you're <laughs> you know what? Fuck that's, you. That's fair. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I'll still give it a partial recommendation because yeah. I like the concept of a shadow monster that can be literally anywhere, but the immersion for it being a shadow monster is ruined by the story itself, and the monster being easily assumed and all that uh, of what it is. Him going mad, living in a bubble with no one trying to help, also broke the immersion of him being a troubled individual because literally no one's trying to help him, at least based on what we see, because unreliable nar- narrator. Yeah. Long story short, still partial. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got there. We did it. <laughs> Should I yeah. put these sort of things just in uh, notes? Um. I mean, it is helpful to kind of like get your like why you why you're doing like a like why your your final recommendation was. Yeah, the way it I was. just find that my final recommendations like, so it, are always yeah. like as long as both of yours combined, and I don't know if that's good or bad. I've I have I have actually since uh, I will say this much I have since uh, for a while like looked like when I I'll jot down notes and I'm like like that I think are gonna be final thoughts like you know what I'm just gonna put that into my actual thoughts and then just like do like kind of a more summarized version for the final thoughts. Yeah, that's what I was starting to do when like, I was writing all this down. But I'm like, should I move it? It's like, I'm already doing this. <laughs> it may be. I mean, like, cause like, again, I realized like I was like, I would, I would, uh, for some of my earlier final thought stuff, I would quote the ending and then like go into like a diatribe about it. And I think I've got called out a couple of times by it, uh, from, from you guys saying that like, that's more of an actual thought than a final thought. <laughs> oh, because it's directly quoting but, something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I've like since reevaluated. Like it's like, well, what what qualifies as a, as a final thought? For me, the final thought is like a summary of why I am still going to recommend it or not hmm. recommend it. And as as wordy After as mine is, I feel like it also it does uh, get that across. Like why the parts I like, the parts I don't like, and why my thought hasn't changed. Basically, yeah. And and I agree. Like it is interesting to see it because like mine was pretty straightforward. Like. I feel like reading the story, it does connect with the Icker Falls like mood and, and atmosphere and stuff like that. So that's why I, I really enjoyed it. But you had a much more uh, dyna- a much more contrasting view on that, and like you're saying, you're, you're basically giving your piece about that mm. situation. So like I, I I get it. Okay. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. If that's it, then um. That will be this week's episode.
So if you like what you heard, or if you didn't, leave us a comment in the comment section below where this gets posted, whether it be on Podbean, Facebook, YouTube, or Tumblr. You can also send us emails. No, you can also send us uh, messages on Twitter. Uh, Mikey is at the E stands for evil. The Gamer in Yellow is at The Gamer in Yellow, but without that W at the end, because his name is very long. Yeah. And I'm at Review Cultist. You can also send us emails at aldente rigamortis at gmail.com. That's A L D E N T E R I G A M O R T I S at gmail.com. Where you can also leave us suggestions for other creepypastas, SCPs, spooky things. You creep it, we'll peep it. Yeah. yeah. And if you'd like to help support our show financially, you can go to Patreon. Look up Aldenk. I'll dank you, Rick Mortis. The dankiest occult r- uh, creep pastas. Nailed it. That's a, oh, we already had our 420 episode. Damn it. <laughs> um, look up Aldente Rick Mortis on Patreon and select the packet tier you'd like to support us at. We have $2 and $5 tier with special episodes, early access, extra content. To all of our patrons that are helping support the show, thank you immensely. You're helping keep those hosting bills at bay. And as always, we very much appreciate that. And to our listeners and the authors of these stories, thank you immensely. Because without your listenership, it'd be like screaming into the darkness that's slowly trying to get at us from every shadow in my room. (laughs) Uh, And if you didn't write these stories and submit them to the Acre Falls website or to creepos.wiki or wherever online for people to read and enjoy and get spooked by, we really wouldn't have much of a show because we'd have nothing to talk about. So thank you. Until next time. I have been your host, Review Cultist. Mikey, these stand for evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And this has been Aldente Rigamortis. Sleep well. <laughs>